Well, Carlos, we meet again. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We do meet again. It's such a pleasure. I have had such amazing reaction to our first episode. And I've covered all various topics on my show. But I've noticed my spiritual interviews are the ones that most people seem interested in. So I will do this introduction and let's get this show on the road. Hey. All right? You are watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. And a big part of my show is having conversations with all types of people. And I chose this name for it because I am fascinated by everyone's story. And every single person I have had a conversation with has had an impact and influence on my life. And because I'm a student and I will be until the day I die, I am fascinated by people's journeys and stories. And today we are back with Carlos Alexander. Carlos is a psychic medium and a shaman and an amazing channeler. Because what you guys didn't see at the last interview, at the end of the at the end of the interview, he channeled Jesus. And we had a conversation. And it was so impactful that I asked Carlos if today we could invite him so I can share him with you too, because I am not selfish. So Carlos, welcome back. Thank you. It's good to be back. Good to be here. How have you been? Been well. Uh, definitely the energies are picking up. When it comes to an astrolog astrological level, things are coming into play. Definitely a domino effect is happening. And it seems that there is more pressure from the divine to spread the work and raise consciousness, raise the vibration at this time. Well, considering what is happening in the Middle East with Israel and the Palestine Palestinians, I just thought it's so timely with everything that, you know, is happening in the world. And now this war is starting again. And the fact that I want to channel Jesus because we know the Jews do not believe that Jesus was who he told us he was or who we were taught he was, which was the son of God. And based on what I've learned growing up, he was crucified because he made that claim. And what's so sort of ironical to me now is we are all sons and daughters of God. And here we crucified one person who is doing so much good for the world. Um, I have lots of Jewish friends and based on conversations I've had with them, I think they still believe this. But that's history and that was then and this is now and I pray to him and he helps me so. I'm excited to talk about him today and invite him into the show. Um, and so I'm gonna turn this part of the interview over to you and how do you wanna proceed with this? Well, one thing I'd like to share with the communities is that, you know, some people call him Lord Jesus Christ, some call him God, others call him an ascended master. And for some, he is just a prophet. But regardless of what he may be, to whomever he did a sacrifice he made a sacrifice some people take this literal and others will take it symbolically i have seen it from both perspectives as a shaman we are meant to see from multiple realms multiple dimensions at the same time and one thing that i've seen is that there's so much conflict in who jesus was and if we were to look at Jesus, in a nutshell, he came here to awaken mankind. He came here to be the lamb, the sacrifice. And some people say, well, I'm not Christian. It wasn't based off of that. When he came to be the sacrifice, he came to take upon a lot of the darkness, the wickedness, the dark magic, the evil intentions, the corruption politically. All of that was so bad 
and controlling the people that he came to kind of squeeze it out like the way we would squeeze a lemon you know into water he came to squeeze out all of that and so one thing to understand is keep an open mind people say well who am i to talk to god or who are you to channel god or jesus or the holy spirit and it's it's not up to man you know the trinity of god the holy spirit sends his word his message to those who need it and i've seen many people that even aren't religious that channel jesus christ i've seen many star seeds that talk to ascended master sananda which is what some people refer to him as in the spiritual community his name is sananda and so and those of you who don't know you can look that up you can find it yourself do your research definitely you want to back up what i'm saying and it's there for you to see but jesus christ came here to give the message that we can be like him we can follow him can we do it just like him well that's the test in life that's the whole point of our incarnation if we can come here and do this mission just as inspirational and powerful as maybe he did. He's not expecting us to be like him either. And so definitely that's something I want to point out there is we're not here to be perfect. We're here to live our incarnation. We're here to follow the example. That doesn't mean we're going to be just like him. We're not here for that. So that's something I just wanted to share with the collective. Thank you so much for that. And one thing that I have learned in my later my later life where I'm experiencing some wisdom is that I respect everybody's beliefs. There is a good reason why people believe what they believe. And I'm not here to change anyone's belief. But I think that people need to have a little bit more respect for the beliefs of each other. And part of the problem with the world is so many of us are high and mighty and self-righteous and think that if someone doesn't see things the way we see it, something is wrong with them and they're stupid. And I hear them say this. And I feel sadness for people who behave and act this way because that's what I call ignorance. And when I lived like that, because I did, and I was ignorant, but as I have become wiser, because I've put the work into trying to get to the bottom of it, I see it for what it is. And so I thank you for explaining it the way you just did. And I'm hoping anyone who was confused or had any doubts is going to get some clarification from that. Well, Shamanism is a really beautiful branch of spirituality. It's been around for thousands of years, since the beginning of time. Shamanism is beautiful because shamanism isn't about discrediting, discrediting you. It's not about telling you you're wrong. It's about telling you how it is that you're seeing things is a little bit in an illusion. It's, it, it, you're, it's a little bit twisted. So a lot of people will feel down and they feel stuck and sick and they feel weird especially when a shaman talks and what a lot of people don't understand is it's because things need to be seen from a higher perspective mm -hmm. so just like you guys i'm the same way i started up in christianity i was baptized you know as a baby catholic and then i went to another church and got baptized at 16 you know and then i kind of went from there Shamanism didn't come around until I was about 21, 22, but before then I was Christian, <laughs> as what people would say. I still tell people I'm still Christian minded. No, I'm not sitting here preaching it, but that was the foundation. So I always tell the collective, this is where my roots began. We all begin somewhere and we have to start somewhere to be able to evolve. So shamanism is just teaching people that your perspective is limited. And if you want to open your roads, if you want to change your vibration, if you want to change your life, 
if you want to connect with spirit in a much more deep, profound manner, especially the Lord Jesus Christ and the Trinity and the angels that come with them, then changing your perspective is going to be of the utmost importance. Most people are worried about not doing bad things, no smoking, no, you know, no lying, no adultery, no, you know, which is great. It's a great start. But if you don't have a true connection with the, the divine, then you're not getting very far. All you're showing is that you have some self-control over how you think about your habits. That's only the start to the biggest picture of it all. Shamanism is here to teach people that they can connect with the divine, especially Jesus Christ, in a very naturistic manner. And not everybody's a channeler, of course, but everybody can connect with him and everybody can hear him regardless of the belief or the structure of how you grew up. I think I've always been sort of a rebel going and growing up because it didn't matter what people told me, including my parents. If it wasn't resonating, I just couldn't accept it. I've always been someone whose nature is, if you tell me something, it has to add up. It has to make sense. Otherwise, it just doesn't resonate and I won't accept it. And I respect all my religious friends and I respect religion because I think it brings a sense of discipline and community amongst people. But personally, I don't subscribe to any religion because what I've noticed, it's a form of control, and some of the teachings are just not resonating. And for me, a lot of them, control equals power. The people behind control are either seeking power or have power. And so when it comes to religion, based on the religion that I was a part of, I pulled away from it because it stopped making sense to me. But hats off to religious people um, who are living a fulfilling, a fulfilling and great life. But before we go on to the channeling, before you bring in the spirit of Jesus, yeah. is there anything you want to say to the viewers in preparation for this channeling? Anybody who is going to hear Lord Jesus' words, one thing you have to do is become neutral within your mindset. Being neutral is going to be the best way to be able to move forward. Because if you're going to come into this with your opinions and what you were taught and what you see and what you know, well, even the scriptures say that God is limitless. He has no bounds. He has no limitations. And so when you're dealing with entities like Lord Jesus, you have to come in with a clean slate within mind, heart, body, and spirit. Don't come in thinking, well, he's going to say exactly what I think. Well, no, maybe not. Because the plan of the creator and the plan of Jesus is to bring mankind into a better organization here on Gaia. And in order to do that, he has to give his way and his plan. Whatever the plan was 2,000 years ago, well, times are changing. Lord Jesus didn't change his opinion nor his ways, but the world does change. And the manners of how this gets done and how this information gets transmitted to you guys is going to change over time but though his words his teachings and the way he loves and respects never does so before something occurred to me as you were speaking and i thought it might benefit everyone watching this if we clarify it before you bring him through now you're a shaman and Jesus was associated with the Christian religion when he was here on the earth. But he's not only there to serve Christians. He looks out for all mankind, whether you're Buddhist, whether you're Hindu. And this is something that's not taught. 
but I've been doing a lot of studying. And I just happen to know that Jesus loves everybody on the earth and he's there for the good and the bad. And as a shaman, could you clarify that before we start so people understand this is not just about Christians? Yes, of course. Well, first and foremost, when we look back in Jesus' times, look back at the scriptures, look yeah. back at what to humanity, were not the Pharisees the ones that were Christian minded? It was the Pharisees and it was the priests of back then that were Christian. That was way there, that was there before Jesus was born. They knew he was coming. A lot of people say, well, Jesus belongs to the Christian church. How? If the same church and organizations called him a blasphemer and said that he channeled demons. They're the ones who told him that he was wrong and they wanted to crucify him for it. So if he belonged to the church, as they say, then why go so far to crucify him? Right. Why go so far to discredit him? To manipulate the people and to get the people away from him. And then when they tried to take his side, they would alienate the women. Oh, and not and oh, the children are annoying. Move them. Oh, it's for the men. They tried to make a patriarchy out of what Jesus Christ was doing. So if he really was connected to the Christian, you know, theology, then they wouldn't have shot so hard to try to crucify him and so many thousands of years later we're still back at square one doing the same thing it is so heart-wrenching especially with the current war now that's happening um in the middle east when are we going to stop this we're destroying each other for what that's correct I can't wait to hear what he has to tell us. <laughs> it, it, it's true, though. It's Jesus Christ came to give a message, the message of God, the same way that people would look at me or any of my other shaman brothers and sisters on this planet doing this are the same way that they look at him. They looked at him the same exact way. You're a liar. You're a blasphemer. That's not true. How do you know? How How is it that you can be so holy? It's not about being holy. It's about being connected. It's about being in tune. Holiness never had anything to do with it. Holiness never had anything to do with it. That Jesus Christ was perfect. Yeah, okay. But he never was saying, be holy. The Pharisees and the church at the time were the ones preaching to be perfect. Why do we all want to be right? Why is it so? I watch people that I work with. With all this stuff going on, I shared my views on the situation. And man, I just saw horns coming up every which way because I didn't have the popular opinion and the popular view about the situation. And just so people watching the show know, here's my agenda. I just want to see people loving each other and part of doing that is respecting how other people feel and letting them feel and believe what they want to. Because at the appointed time, if those beliefs are meant to change, they will. But stop hating and wanting to kill people just because they don't see things your way. It doesn't mean you're smarter or they're smarter. It's your reality and theirs. I don't want to eat up this interview. I'm turning it over to you, Carlos. I just had oh. to say that because of something that happened yesterday. Of course. And as I told um, one of my uh, clients just the other day, she was highly upset because I gave a message to her for to give to her family and her family went in awe and anger and they were just flabbergasted about what was said. And I told her this, and I'll tell the people, when you're in a high vibration and you give messages of the divine, your opinion is 
the less respected. When you aren't heard by the people, you're doing something right. Because yeah. when you have all this attention and when you have everybody giving you the views, more, more than likely, not saying everybody, but more than likely, you're not giving the proper message because people like lies. People like to be feeling good within their ego. So if your opinion isn't popular, then more than likely you are doing the divine's work. To tell you the truth, Carlos, I don't care what anyone thinks of me. Otherwise, I wouldn't go off the beaten path and do the type of interviews that I do. But I don't care. I am not offensive and I'm not intending to hurt anyone. So whether they like what I do and say is beyond my concern. So let's carry on with our show. All righty. Those of you who are watching, make sure you have some water with you. Make sure you light an incense. Always, you can pause the video if you need to, to be able to get yourself prepared. And, well, without taking too much more time, let's get started. We'll talk to you guys after. With the sacred permission of my divine father, we find ourselves saluting our heavenly grace. With the permission of the divine councils and my blessed mother, our Virgin Mary. Jesus Christ of the heavens above, and of the earth below, ready to work and serve, my Lord. At your service of you and your divine children, great being of consciousness, a pleasure and a warm hello to all those watching this day. Welcome, Jesus. Thank you for having me and our beloved host of angels. I am here today. It seems like many want to speak and know more truth. Yes. Before we get, how are you today? I'm very good, thank you. I'm very excited to bring you in today to share you with my viewers and to enjoy my time with you, especially because of everything happening on the planet today. There is a major influx of evil, of war, and of murder happening upon the planet. This does make us very weary, sad, and angry at the same time for the shedding of innocent blood. Yes. We do not want this, for it is specific man and specific entities behind the curtain that produce these kinds of results. We warn them to stop. We tell them that they will see their day if they continue to do this kind of salty, disruptive, chaotic torture upon the people. Unfortunately, the forces that are against the light feed off of this kind of vibration. We want to be with you all. 
a lot of people say they don't feel me or my angels or the heavenly host of above. One thing I will say is, especially in these times, we are right next to you. If we are not felt, it is because we are helping those that truly need the help, that truly need comfort, those that are stuck, kidnapped, taken, have half a life, are without limbs, that are going hungry. We are there helping those, not to say that we do not help those that call upon our presence, but as our Lord says, as long as you have food in your bellies, clothes on your back, and a roof over your head, then you are much more blessed than those without. What do you think about that? I agree. And I thank you so much that you are helping those people that you described earlier. These are the people that need our attention. There are people that are trying to get away. And even if it's not in the war that's happening right now, in these moments, there are people swimming in waters trying to cross borders. There are people that are crossing deserts all over the world just to find a safe haven. There are people that are stuck in homes that have been bomb struck. We must be there to attend to these people. And we use the beings in flesh you guys, to help assist us in a much more deeper manner. Lord Jesus, why are these people allowed to do this, the innocent humans? When we talk about innocence, we know that the angels are also innocent. Innocence is not allowed on this planet when there are forces that only choose to be vengeful and destructive. They are exuding their free consciousness, the will that they desire. There is a will for the light team as well. And there are many up in high power that carry the light and the markings of the creator. But many get bought out, many get set. And frankly, there's a lot of those that are just too afraid to come out and speak. No matter the circumstance, this is the problem. Too many dark ones, evil intended ones, mm -hmm. speaking and not enough light vocalizing what is supposed to be. The war that is going on in the spiritual realm is knowledge versus ignorance. They say ignorance is bliss, and more so in these times, that is the truth. But the more that the teams of light speak up and hold their own, things will get better. It takes to unify the voices. I. I allow every single being on this planet to enact their free will. If you want to believe the sky is purple, 
so be it. If you want to believe that you're male, but you're actually female, or vice versa, then so be it. If you want to believe that healing music can alter your DNA, well, so be it. This earth was meant for anybody who is willing to believe in whatever it may be, that they may believe with heart and pride. We're talking the pride of the central sun, the pride of the lion, the great king of the jungle, right? Be in your power. They'll say, well, I don't have the position to speak up, nor the influence. The Lord has taught us, even if you don't speak, the light can reach even the most darkest of planes. And this has been the truth since the beginning of time. Does that make sense? It does. It does. But a lot of people of light who are speaking up are being silenced. This is correct. Why are they being silenced? Because those voices can win this war like that. And this is why we have to be more strategic. This is why we have chosen more bodies, the shamans, the workers of light. We have chosen more incarnates to come down and to do this work silently. This is why you find so many on the camera screen and their light and their elevated. Not all these people are chosen by the light team. People say, well, how do you know? Why do I know that? Because the full truth is not spe being spoken. We're talking about crystals and we're talking about types of psychedelic drugs and we're talking about how our vibrations can be raised. Why aren't we talking about how to elevate our coatings to be able to help end world hunger? Because that can be done. Why is that not a conversation on these platforms? We're only talking about elevating light, but we're not talking about how that's going to reflect. We're not talking about anything that is crucial. Gemstones and rocks may have a great healing property, but those aren't going to end hunger unless you humans like to eat rocks. I doubt it, you can't even chew it. So these conversations need to become more potent and we need to stop sugarcoating so everybody can feel love. While you feel love and while the neighbor feels love, there is a seven year old child over here being battered and going hungry. So. It's great that many feel the love, but my seven-year-old innocent boy down the street, he doesn't feel that love. He's hungry. He's hurting. He has abusive parents. And this is where we need to point our minds more and stop talking about things that are being repeated over and over and over when there's more at hand to talk about. And if more people were to talk about this, the masses would stand up. Out of 100% of these stories that should be talked about, only 3% of it is talked about 
where's the other 97%? Does that make sense? It does. A lot of people who are comfortable, they do not think about anybody outside of their families and themselves. Because they say, I'm here to break the curses. I'm here to destroy. I was chosen by the great divine. That's a hefty thing to say. And only think that you're here for the divine families. Or to break curses upon your lineage. You are not here only for your bloodlines, great children. You are here for all. And this is why there is such a limitation. Carlos has the experience and the knowledge to understand. And we have sat him down and we have gotten on his tail and told him, if you think you're only here to break your family curse, well, the curse is upon the families around you that are not your blood are much worse than your own. So, if you think you're high and mighty to break your own family lineage, I dare you to stand up and break lineages curses upon those that are not of your own. And as a good shaman, he said, I'll do it. <laughs> but that's hard. And that's pressure. And that gets felt in the body. And that makes you uncomfortable. But that's okay. Being uncomfortable just means you're growing. Am I right? You are. What message would you like to leave for people watching this interview that deny that you are the one speaking to us? You, Jesus. Because you know that there are going to be people that deny that you are actually present here, leaving these messages for them. You can deny. Oh, that that's fine. If you guys like to deny, that is okay. But one thing I will say is anybody who refers to Jesus <laughs> knows that that name and that that energy is a healer. All of you watching know that you are healers. I am not here for those that do not wish to be saved or enlightened. I am here for those that seek. If you do not seek these messages, then it is not your time, perhaps. Or it is not your moment to go all the way up to the divine. And that's okay. But I'm here to elevate my fellow healers. I'm here to put strongholds of light armies around those who wish to obey their own intuition. Not me. You don't need to obey me. Obey the plan that you came here for. You didn't come here to be limited. You came here to be limitless. As long as that is the case, and as long as you incarnated, this is not my plan, it is yours. And you only wished to be triggered to be able to find your way. If I am that trigger, well, blessed be. If I am not that trigger, then you will find your way. You don't need to accept because those that don't accept the prophets, the shamans that I use, because it's not only one, there's many. Those that don't accept deny very much large portions of themselves. 
oh, that's not real. That doesn't exist. That's limited. That's low vibrational. That's dark. That's dense. Anytime you deny anything inside of you, why would I expect anybody to accept me if you can't even accept yourself? Great, great answer. Thank you. It is not to offend, but it is the truth. I don't need to have anybody accept me. But when they do, a multitude of blessings, gifts, ascension, spirit guides, and the loving codes of the heavens flourish through you. You don't have to be Catholic or Christian or embodied, engulfed in the scriptures to do this. The scriptures are a main base for what we talk about. But see for yourself. I challenge my children here on the earth to see it for themselves. Challenge me. That's fine. Deny me. That's okay. One way or another, you will find your way. Back to the heavenly celestials. If it is not through this shaman, it will be through another priest who is endowed. It will be through another channeler who is in doubt if it's not this in doubt shaman that's okay blessed be your path regardless lord jesus why is it that when humans come to the earth they forget the reason that they have agreed to come because it appears as though this is the problem people get here and forget why they have come. We must remember that your physical bodies are very dense, energetically, physically, physiologically. All of these things are dense. It is not that we want you to forget but when you come down from such high realms to this density, there is a natural veil of forgetfulness that gets placed upon because your spirit may know, but your physical body is the one that came into the earth. They say you're not your body, you're your spirit, that you use this body as a meat suit. Well, if your body is not of the heavens, then how is it supposed to remember? Your body is not of heaven or the higher celestial realms. Your spirit is. So when your spirit's coming down, your soul, if you will, comes down into the body your body is the physical denseness of this planet. You carry the coatings and the feelings of Gaia, of what this reality is, because your spirit is not of this matrix, right? Mm -hmm. You're not from here. 97, 8% of you are not from this planet. You come from different sources, different galaxies, universes, faraway planets that many of you may know about. Forgetting is a part of this matrix. This is why we have sent the many of you, light team, to help break that barrier. Because these bodies that you guys inhabit are very weak, evolutionary-wise. The spirit is very tough, but the body is weak. And some people take that to offense. It is true. If a full-on light being, 
or extraterrestrial was to come down and present themselves right in front of you, you would be disintegrated. I am not saying that the body is weak because you are weak. I'm saying the body is weak because it cannot handle these high vibrations from the celestial. Which is why when your spirit goes through and you start to awaken, you remember. It's because the flame, the fire of the celestial within you is activating the body. You don't come in activated. You activate your body when your fire within ignites. Wow. For some, this is at three years old. For others, this is when they turn 55. And that's okay. Forgetfulness is a part of this plan. Now remember, this wouldn't be Earth if you just came down and knew who you were. We call them trials and tests, do we not? Yes. Since when do you have the answers to the test right in front of you? Sometimes it's good to take a test from the knowledge you carry within your spirit. Coming into the earth and being awoken has become the new age thing. Oh, I'm awoken. I'm awake. To be truly awake is to understand oneself and to understand why you're here and putting it into practice. Without putting it into motion, then your words are empty. Forgetfulness is a blessing as well as a curse. There is a duality within what you are asking me. Does this make sense? It does. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I notice a lot of children are being born today and they're at very young age remembering who they were in the previous lifetimes. Is there a reason for this? Because of you guys. The collective is doing the work. The collective is awakening enough to lighten the matrix, to bring new coatings into the grids, which is allowing the young, powerful dragons being born to come in with a little bit of an easier time than what you may have gone through. They are a generation that's going to blow up spirituality. They don't care about what people think. No, they don't. They don't care. It is because they carry the same essence of the divine spark. Many of the older generations call these ones lazy. Lazy? These are the ones that are bringing in the new celestial heaven on this planet. Lazy is not a word I would give the new babies coming through. They need guidance. And when they are remembering, it is because the generations before them didn't want to remember. God, or Christ consciousness, gave them the opportunity because they accepted it. You have to accept that opportunity. And these new children coming in have come in with powerful structures within their spirits that are activating their bodies instantly. But don't feel bad if you're not awoken like these. Because even five years ago, the matrix was not what it is today. No. The, that is beaming through the paradigms at this time 
is not what it was. The darkness was way more penetrated even five years ago. Mm -hmm. What it is today is immaculate. The light that is shining through is very, very intense. And this is why many of those who aren't awoken are getting sick, not feeling right. They feel off. They feel weird or like something bad is going to happen. It's not this. It's because the light is beaming onto your chakras and you're not used to it. But these small innocent ones, they are used to it. Thank the God above, Thank the divine above, that this is the plan. And the ones coming in, remembering their past lives, they're going to be some of the greatest leaders this planet has ever seen. Thank God for that. Jesus, some of the parents who are bringing these children in have been taking them to psychiatrists and psychologists because they don't know what to do with them. And they're thinking something is wrong with the kids. I, right. from a young age, had some of these gifts. And as you've seen what's happened with my life, people around me didn't know how to guide me. So I grew up thinking I was strange. Well, these parents are feeling the same way about these children today. Do you have a message for them? It is not easy to raise a divine one. The divine ones are usually the ones that are the most depressed, the most upset, the most emotional. And parents today, many of them are not connected emotionally. These children need to connect back to source. If a parent figure decides that seeing a psychiatrist is going to benefit the child, I'm not against it. What I am against is forcing these children to believe something that they are not. What you see is crazy. What you see is not real. Now, for the world, this is true. If there is a child that says that they hear spirits, well, they're going to get told they're schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change. Helping the child to understand themselves physically, if it is helpful for them, then so be it. What you may not understand Dear parents of divine children, listen to your offspring. Listen to them. There is no psychiatrist better than a mother and a father. There is no therapist that can be better than a mother and a father, a grandmother, a grandfather. People who don't even know these children are giving them diagnosis, prescription pills. Mm -hmm. For some, it is needed. I will not stand here and say, oh, that's not good for you. Some children need it because some children do not know how to control it. Mm -hmm. And if that child goes too far within insanity, we know what's going to happen. Suicide. The cutting. Fighting. Abandonment completely. So again, if therapy helps, then so be it. But if you're going to force your child to be a robot and to not express themselves, then you are doing a grave 
illness upon your child. But who am I to say, they are not my physical children, they are yours. If you seem to know the answer, then so be it. But if you don't know the answer, then be more emotionally involved. If your child says something of the past or brings up a trauma, don't get defensive. Let the child speak. If that child says, well, you this and you that and you hurt me, don't say, well, we're the elders. That's how life is. Tough luck. You're treating your children for the future. And the way you speak to them, they will speak to others. Would you like your children to be heartless towards those who are in need? Of course not. Therapy is good if it is for the right means at minimal levels. But family therapy, now that's where the gold is. <laughs> family therapy. Don't throw your child in to see a psychologist. You go see a psychologist. Because if your child's like that, what has that child picked up from you? What has that child received from your energetic field? If the child has to go see one, well, I better see the whole family sitting in there because this is where the true healing will happen. Am thank I making... You are. And I thank you so much. I mean, this is really powerful. My prayer is that everything you're sharing will be well received because it's so valuable. And I thank you so much. Uh, is there any messages or solutions you can leave with us or anybody watching this interview that could kind of guide us on how we can create some of the change that is necessary on the planet. I believe that each of us is responsible for playing a part. And I put myself out there by doing interviews like this that are not so popular, but I am not looking to be popular. I'm here to do that, which I was born for. I agree. One thing we would love to tell the public is nighttime has become a very intricate, scary time. Mm -hmm. especially these last days. Yes. It is important for children and elderly alike to be lighting their candles, their prayer candles. Many people pray and there is no light beside them burning. Many are trying to transmute the energy, the dark energy, the dense energies through their bodies. This is causing a problem because it's making people more tired, more hungover. Transmuting the energies all yourself is not the solution only through your body. It, it cannot be the solution. To be able to help any of you that are trying to transmute and remove the gunk within your auras or within your families, or breaking generational curses, if you will, it is best to light white candles. Not just one, but light two. One for your body and one for your spirit. Mm. When you take upon all this negativity, this is why you feel like the darkness is coming upon you. The darkness knows how to dim a human soul. The darkness knows how to make you tired real quick. Mm -hmm. But if you have 
lights open at your disposal, it is best to have these on, especially at night when you go to sleep. There are many of these days that say, but candles start fires and but this, but that, but this, a thousand excuses for it. And I say, find a way. It is crucial that the collective start lighting their white candles. Some people may ask, but Lord Jesus, what about the blue ones? What about the purple ones? How about a yellow one? My divine child, if that's what calls to your heart, light it. <laughs> Don't ask so many questions that you keep yourself stuck. Light the candle. Light one for your body and light one for your spirit. And the candles will help transmute. Many of you are stuck in closed roads. Your path is not open. You're not receiving the financial assistance you need. You're not receiving the miracle you want. You're not getting the blessing you need. I recommend this highly for those that are stagnant or that are just trying to transmute energy. This is important. Some people tell me, but I like incense. Let me ask you a question. Is incense fire? No. Incense is incorporated with the air element. And is spirit not made of fire? Of the burning everlasting flame? So spirit needs to reside or match with something in the physical realm a candle, and the flame, especially if it's a white candle, will resonate with your body and your spirit. Does this make sense? It does. It does. And one final message that we would give to the lovely people of Gaia is this. Stop meddling your consciousness into everybody's business. <laughs> I have seen many people that say, but the neighbor is wicked, but my parents, but this, but they send me. But you don't understand. You don't know. Stop creating excuses to be in other people's consciousness. Sit in your own and you wouldn't have so many parasites lingering on you. There are people who are being attacked on this planet. We are aware. There are people being worked on with chaos magic. We mm -hmm. are aware. Mm -hmm. There comes a moment that if you blame this magic enough, you become the one that's cursing, not the other way around. If you blame the parasites enough, it becomes integrated within you. Keep your noses out of other people's consciousness. And many, many of the people on this planet today keep butting in. I felt this. I felt that. I sensed it. Well, that wasn't us putting you to it. It was you that was within. People say, I was warned by God. We did not warn you. Your consciousness is meddled in. Now, if it is a loved one, this may be different. Right? This may be a very different situation. But if it is not a loved one or someone that you are trying to protect, then why have them in here? 
Am I making sense? Absolutely. People say, then how do I fix that? Well, worry more about what's in the mirror. <laughs> Look in the mirror. And you will find everything you need. For those that are being attacked, your situation may be different depending on the circumstance you are going through. If you are being highly attacked by malevolent forces, mm -hmm. I highly recommend you call upon seraphim angels. I highly recommend you light orange and yellow candles. Because the energy you have to transmute is much more dense and deep than those that are just transmuting some anger and negativity and childhood blockage, if you will. If you are being attacked, we will send you the forces you need to be able to not feel like you are being bombarded. But we need for you to hug tight to the divine consciousness. We need for you to hold on. Hold on. Because this fight is ugly. But you will be victorious regardless. Yes. Am I clear? You are very clear. And I am so grateful. Good. Is there anything else I can answer for you and the Divine Collective today? The last question is, do you, can we look forward to peace in the Middle East anytime soon? Is this going to escalate or is this going to be controlled? The heavenly realms are on top of this. Okay. Yeah. It wants to escalate. We're not going to sit here and say, peace be upon you. Let's be real. It wants to escalate even further. We are in contact with your government leaders. Not just this government of the U.S., but all the government leaders of the planet Gaia. We connect to them and we talk to all of them. They are aware that if they go too far, we will intervene. Yay! Yay! This intervening does include extraterrestrial sightings, UFO encounters, it does include the miracles of the sky. Thank you. Be not afraid, but know that we are right here. And we will intervene in very heavy measures that many of your prophets and seers have already foretold what I'm speaking. Yes. Yes. I do say that this can change the whole factor if it comes down to it escalating more. It is up to the people to receive us when we come from the sky, when we are seen with the physical eyes. It is up to the people to accept, not fear and run to the markets to stock up on food. It is to get into reverence and receive us within your divine vessels. We are on top of this, but this is difficult when there are leaders of your world that do not have the same agenda as us. Right, right. Bear with us. Or the roller coaster is bumpy, but the ride will end. 
and you will get back to your peace. One way or another, your peace shall be restored. I love you so much. I thank you. I'm tired of seeing the bullies run the gamut and the light wins. Thank you for that confirmation. Thank you for being here with us. I will do my best to spread the word. Thank you for listening and for having all of us spiritual realm to speak. For I don't only speak for me, but I speak for all ancestors, angels, animal spirits, the chiefs of the lands. I speak for all, not only for me. And the spiritual realm salutes you all and loves you all. And if you ever need extra protection, no matter who you are, call upon it. We are here. Always with the permission of the Divine Lord when you ask. And with the humbleness and the heart of our Great Mother, you will have it granted to you. Are we clear? You're very clear. I thank you. I'm humbled to have had this experience. And I thank you. I know you've had my back my entire life. And I am not going to disappoint. Thank you. Thank you. I will let you go. We have other work to accomplish before it gets later in this day. We will let you speak back to Dragon. Thank you. Goodbye. Blessings to you. Love Thank to you all. Thank you. Oof. Wow. Are. Wow. <laughs> that was, I, my body was shaking. I'm so cold. Is that normal? I am so cold. My body kept shaking. It is very normal uh, to feel these kinds of uh, effects. Most people will feel the coldness. And that specifically, that symptom that you feel is because that darkness has been eradicated from away from you. And because it's doing it so fast, your body feels that symptom in that way. And so it's definitely normal to feel, and some people may feel heat. Others may feel extreme heat. Others may feel nauseous within their solar plexus. Oh, a little nauseous, yeah. You know, within their heart space. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're talking to a high dimensional being who has the power over universes. Of course, you're going to feel that way. He's a divine God. <laughs> I don't think you know what he told me, but I'm going to edit this show tonight and you'll get it before you go to bed and you'll hear what you channel. It was, I mean, unbelievable. I can't even believe we just did this. I would love to definitely reflect back. Um, a yeah. lot of, I do this awake, I do this consciously, but the messages that are given are definitely not mine. They're not mine because a lot of the, especially the brain, I'll feel the pressure in the brain, especially up here. And when they're giving their messages, the messages come through and they go into the brain and then they get spoken. So a lot of times when you hear how he pauses for a minute, it's because he's bringing that information into the brain to talk to you guys. So yes, cannot wait to see that. Well, I'm not sleeping until this is on YouTube tonight and you will have the link because I've interviewed so many people for 12 years, nothing like this, nothing, nothing like this. I am so blessed to have had this opportunity. And so I'll wanna wrap this up because we've eaten up an hour, but before I do that, is there anything you want to leave with the viewers? Definitely, I just want to thank the viewers for allowing me into their space 
and giving the time to even be here with us. Just that alone, no matter where you're at in your path, no matter what you think, believe or know, this reunion that we're having together is sacred. And I am grateful to the people, to all the supporters and the future supporters that we'll get to meet for joining us on this miraculous divine time. It is beautiful to be with you guys. I can feel the viewers from across the screen. I can feel the viewers already. I can feel the people who are in need of these messages. Right. So you who are watching, thank you. I appreciate you. Me, myself, my body, I love you tremendously. And continue your great work. And be inspired that you are here for divine wisdom. You are here to be the gift. You are the gift of this world. Always remember that. Carlos, this is only number two. We have a series to do. <laughs> and I promise you guys that every week I'm going to bring Carlos as long as he can afford the time. I will make the time because the world needs the messages that are being channeled through this wonderful man. And just ask you all to keep him in your prayers because whenever you're doing this kind of work, you heard from Jesus. You're under a lot of attack. I know because I don't do half of what he does and I'm constantly under attack. But you heard what Jesus said. And if you choose not to believe this and if you think this is some kind of fiasco that you're lost, um, I know what I just experienced or what I experienced the previous interview with him. And I can't wait to bring another segment to you. So thank you for watching Conversations with Jenny Lynn. You just never put in a brain. And I am hoping that you are going to walk away from this with hope. I have promised Jesus and the energies that we channeled today that I will get this video out there. So if you're watching this, help me spread it. It's not about me. I'm not looking for fame. I am not looking for fortune. I was born to be in the world for this time and I'm just trying to do my part. So please help me and let this video go viral so that people can hear the message from God. It is a message of hope. And the light wins. Yay. See you Amen. soon with the next episode. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs>